إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We we'll begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We we'll praise Him and we we'll ask His help and we we'll seek His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil inside us and from the evil consequences of our bad actions. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray, no one can guide. I testify that there is no God to be worshipped but Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our teacher, our leader, our prophet. The Prophet and the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Brothers and sisters We are inshallah continuing the uh, 100 days of Rahma initiative And as many of you know the purpose or the goal of that Is to foster mercy and love Compassion Brotherhood and sisterhood In our masjid and also in our community and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward those who came up with this idea. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their families. Allahumma ameen. So two weeks ago, we talked about rahmah. We gave a khutbah, an introduction to rahmah. Last week, the khutbah was a beautiful khutbah by Shaykh Hassan Irwan about empathy. And today, inshallah, we'll continue the theme about mercy. Today, inshallah, is mercy in, mercy in the Islamic law. The sharia or the rahmah in the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before we start, can you please move forward a little bit? Just make room for those who come, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created is out of His divine mercy. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed is out of His divine mercy. And even His legislations were designed to benefit us were also out of His divine mercy. A lot of us don't realize that the basic purpose of Sharia is to make human being upright and worthy of being the maintainer of the earth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of us don't realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established Sharia to be a framework for our lives, to help us to achieve well-being in this, in this life and also salvation in the next life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ That my mercy extends to everything, everything. And that includes the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That includes the Islamic law. Because Islamic law, brothers and sisters, is not just about justice, it's also about mercy. The divine justice is categorized by rahmah. And if you were to take away rahmah from sharia, then it is no longer divine law. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends ease for you and not difficulty. And this is really, this ayah is a product of mercy. And this ayah, if this ayah was the only ayah revealed in the Quran, it would have been enough for us if we really understand the meaning of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expresses the intent behind his uh, sharia, behind his Islamic law, which is to facilitate and make things easy. Unlike some of us sometimes, if a solution for a problem or to a problem is, is, is is, is not easy, is, 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 is not, or is not difficult enough, is, is not hard enough. 
Some of us start to doubt and question the soundness of the solution. And some of us sometimes, they actually want to answer a solution that is more hard, that is uh, difficult. And that actually contradicts what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّيرِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not placed upon you any type of difficulties in your religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not placed upon you any difficulty in the religion. So inshallah, uh, we will highlight some examples to see how rahmah works in sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold a human being responsible by that which he cannot or she cannot bear. And the scholars of Usul, they understood from that that a very important rule in fiqh and Usul fiqh that لا تكليف إلا بمقدور ومعلوم that in Sharia, a person will not and shall, shall not be legally responsible for something that he does not know or something that is out of his control. So the knowledge must be there. The capacity, the ability must be there. And if they don't exist, then there is no accountability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands all to make hajj. But he also said, if you're able to, if you're not able to make hajj, which is one of the pillars of Islam, if you're not allowed, if you cannot go there because you have some debts, you're paying your mortgage, you're paying your car loans, you're uh, keeping some money for, your, for, for student loans for your children, then you don't have to. There is no accountability. You will not hold responsible before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you did not fulfill one of, his, one of the pillars of Islam. Another example is the Sharia al rukhas the legislation of rukhas And rukhas I don't know how to translate this really. Rukhas is just to creating laws based on special circumstances and needs. Creating laws based on special circumstances and needs. That's the meaning of rukhas And there is a law in Islam. It's called the Sharia al rukhas and this is one of the, a very important feature of our religion, which means that when something is haram, when something is mandatory, it's not under all circumstances. You know, when you travel, you're allowed to combine and shorten your prayer, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at his time, there's an incident that took place where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a group of people on an expedition and he appointed Amr ibn al-As to be the commander of this expedition. And so he used to lead people in prayer. So one day on their way out and their way back to Medina, it was a, a very cold night. He got up for Salat al-Fajr. He had to make ghusl. He couldn't find water except freezing cold water. And so he didn't want to hurt himself by taking a shower or making ghusl. He was in freezing cold water. And so he made tayammum and he led people in prayer. And he told them after the prayer was over, after they arrived in Medina, they told Rasulullah about what happened. Rasulullah said, Ya Amr, Salaita bin Nasi, you anta junub. Did you lead people in prayer while you are junub? He said, Ya, ya Rasulullah, Allah is the one who 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 is the Oh Prophet of Allah, it was a cold night. There was the, the only water that was available was a freezing cold water. And so I was concerned about my safety. And so I performed tayammum and I led the prayer and I also remembered what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran do not kill yourself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful with you so what is this if it's not mercy and this ruhas brothers and sisters not only in ibadat not only in prayers not only in fasting or making hajj or giving your zakah it's also in mu'amalat, it's also in the interactions, civil transactions like commerce, trade, business, politics. And listen to this carefully, pay attention. Not only did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the use of rukhas a part of his law, he actually loves those who make a use of this rukhas. 
And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah yuhibu an tu'ta rukhasuh, kama yuhibu an tu'ta azaim. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who make use of this rukhas, of these special circumstances, of that law that was based on that need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who actually make use of this rukhas as much as he loves those who adhere or who uh, follow his, his, his law uh, under normal circumstances. Again, what is this if it's not mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And there's so many rules, brothers and sisters, in law and usul and fiqh, and in fiqh that there is no really enough time to elaborate and explain some of them, but some that I'm sure that you heard here and there, like al-hajah, that when a need becomes prevalent, then it takes the rule of a necessity. A dire need, temporary, um, uh, allow one to, 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 to access that which is unlawful. What is this if it's not rahmah? And a part of that rahmah, brothers and sisters, a part of the sharia's mercifulness that sharia has purposes sharia has objectives it's not just some intellectual construct it has an intent behind it It has a wisdom a wisdom an intent that is that is realistic that is practical that is also intellectual that the sharia came to protect the five essentials namely life intellect wealth religion and honor so Sharia came to protect the rights of people. Sharia came to, to, to promote the whole being of, of human beings. Unfortunately, when some of us talk about Sharia, we always associate Sharia with Hudud. Although Hudud just make up a very small percentage of the entire Islamic law, the entire Sharia, less than 3%. But guess what? If you look at the application of Hudud, you will also see that mercy of Sharia is very apparent. For example, Rasulullah said, Idra'u al hudud bi A hadith that became a rule later on. The Rasulullah said, Avoid punishment in cases of doubts or in cases where some, there is some doubts. For example, if there is a, a crime, somebody committed something, somebody violated the law. then it is mandatory upon the judge, upon the Muslim Qadi to look for doubts. If some doubts were introduced in the case, then the had, there is no more application of the punishment of the had anymore. For example, the Qasas, which is the toughest had Qasas in Islam. They call it death penalty, but it's not really death penalty. Because death penalty, it's the state versus the, the accused. Qasas is the family of the victim versus the accused. And when we talk about hudud, you have to differentiate between the right of Allah and the right of the individual. When the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is violated, all you have to do is just ask Allah forgiveness and hope that He will forgive you. But when the right of the person or right of the individual is violated, then you have to go to this individual and seek forgiveness. So qasas, they say qasas is death, death penalty. It's not death penalty because Again, it's, it's, it's the family of the victim versus the accused. So qasas is not equal to death penalty. Nine years ago, I used to uh, go to uh, a prison in Ohio to teach once a week. It was a death row prison. Or like maybe 50 or 60 people that I used to teach, inmates, death row. So it's just, you know, it's better not to, 
not to know why they are here. You know, so, so, sometimes when I used to go to teach, I'd be waiting for them to, for the guards to bring me the inmates. You know, some of these people, they are like, you know, commanders and wardens and stuff like that, that they would be telling me, you know, you don't have to be so nice to these people. You don't know what they did. They are criminals. And I used to tell you know, you don't have to tell me what they did because I, you know, I don't want my heart to change towards any of them. So anyways, I went there for a couple of years. So I stopped, you know, um, after a year, I had a call actually from the chaplain there in that Ohio State Penitentiary. And then he, he asked me to come and visit someone who has already received his uh, date for execution. His name was Sharif, his last name was Smith. Sharif killed someone and that's why he went to prison. He, he was there for 15 years. When he got into prison, he actually converted to Islam. And for 15 years, 15 years, he's waiting for the execution. 15 years, subhanAllah. So anyways, I went to visit him and he told me, you know, I get a day for the execution and I want you to, um, you know, I want you to take care of my body after I leave. I said, well, there is a new imam that you should talk to him. He said, you know, I want you to handle me after I die. So please promise me that you will come. And then, you know, I couldn't say no. So they moved him from Ohio to uh, Youngstown, Ohio to somewhere in Kentucky. It was like seven or eight hours drive from Pittsburgh. So I went there a day before the execution. I spent the whole day with him, just talking about Allah, about Jannah. And, you know, the day, uh, the day of the execution, he asked me to come and pray Fajr with him. I went there around like 5.30, 6 o'clock, prayed Fajr together. Also talked about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love of Allah, what Allah has promised the believers. And so he asked me to be with him in the room. And I said, Sharif, this is too much. I can't. And he said, you know, I asked nobody to come, you know, but you. So please, I want you to come. There's no family members, nobody. I want to see your face before I leave. It was so hard. It was so hard. So I went there. Then they found out that the victim was actually a Muslim. The, the, the person that Smith killed was actually a Muslim. And his, his, his family was there. And they approached me and they, you know, here are you Sharif's Imam? I said, yes. They said, well, Salaam Alaikum, we are, you know, the family of the, of the victim. And, and, and then a lady told me, you know, we have forgiven him. We have forgiven him because we want the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is there any way that our forgiveness will actually do something, get him out of this situation? You know? We have been talking to each other, we've been sending letters for many years. He asked forgiveness and we, we, we granted him this forgiveness. And that's when I really realized that there's a difference between death penalty and qasas in Islam. The people who have all this misconception about sharia, that the sharia is a threat. No, sharia is about mercy. Sharia is about justice. Sharia, sharia is about wisdom. You know, there, there was this incident when a man killed another, another man's child and then the, 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 the guardian of the victim, he brought the killer. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I want qasas from this man. He killed my son. And Rasulullah sallallahu asked and the man admitted. And then Rasulullah sallallahu said to him, why don't you let him go? Why don't you forgive him? He said, no, this is my right, which is true. It's his right. It's his right. And no blame on him if he asked for his right. But forgiveness is, is bigger than this. And when you forgive, you're not just avoiding the pain. You're going through the pain where the reward will even increase and become bigger. And you will learn something. Then Rasulullah sallallahu said, خُذْهُ فَقْتُلْهُ فَإِنَّكَ مِثْلَ Well, take him and kill him. You're just like him. You're a murderer. Just like him. And then I thought, yeah, SubhanAllah, this is in Sunan Ibn Majah. The chapter is Al-Afu Anil Qasas. He said, and then I, I thought, you know, why did the Prophet sallallahu say this to this man? Why did he compare the guardian of the victim to a murderer? Because again, forgiveness is more important than anything else. 
because an eye for an eye makes the entire world blind. And if you go out seeking revenge for every act of injustice, then you will never stop taking revenge. And that's why Rasulullah said, as Anas reported, ما رفع إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم شيئاً من القصاص إلا أمر فيه بالعفو. The Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم always shows forgiveness over retaliation. What is this if it's not mercy? أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم. اللهم صل وسلم عليك يا رسول الله محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه ومن والاه اللهم لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما انفعنا وزدنا علما وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين Brothers and sisters, inshallah, I will end my khutbah with this powerful, profound statement by Ibn al-Qayyim. The statement is in his book, I'lam al-Waqi'in, volume 3, page 12. Pay attention to this. He said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الشَّرِيعَةَ مَبْنَاهَا وَأَسَاسُهَا عَلَى الْحِكْمَةِ وَمَصَالِحِ الْعِبَادِ فِي الْمَعَادِ وَالْمَعَاشِ فهي عدل كلها رحمة كلها حكمة كلها فكل مسألة خرجت من العدل إلى الجور ومن الحكمة إلى ضدها ومن الحكمة إلى العبث فليست من الشريعة في شيء وإن دخل وإن دخلت فيها بالتأويل. He said رحمه الله that Sharia is in the interest of people that Sharia is based on wisdom. And the well-being of people. That Sharia is it's all about justice. That Sharia is all about mercy. It's all about wisdom. And if and if if a matter, so every matter that, that seems unjust, every matter that seems unmerciful, every matter that, that seems unwise is not Sharia. It's not a part of the Sharia, even if it's presented as Sharia through someone's interpretation. Brothers and sisters, really, what is this if it's not mercy? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the religion of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to, to contemplate on the Sharia and the Islamic law and the wisdom and the intent behind everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated upon us. Allahumma ameen. اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين before we finish i have to uh, to read some announcements inshallah there are important changes to parking locations that i so i can use every one needs to be aware of this please see the flyers in the lobby for more information if you are not already aware of this this week for uh, 100 days of rahmah let us inshallah we pledge to engage with our youth Inshallah, there are a lot of youth here in the second Jum'ah, Inshallah. So uh, just take a moment, you know, talk, to, with, talk with them. We'll make it awkward though. Uh, Friday li li Night Live, Inshallah, will be held in the NPR tonight from 6 to 7, followed by a social hour and snacks for the youth, Inshallah. ISO I's, I, I's Parenting Committee is uh, excited to host Story Time Fun tomorrow from 3 to 4, Inshallah, in the West in the West Classroom for kids in a, uh, kindergarten to uh, second grade. Books, inshallah, will be read by, ICU, by an ICUI youth. ICUI's Young Professional Speaker Series, inshallah, is excited to host their first professional speaker, Kamran Khan, who is, inshallah, a software engineer, camera and voice actor. Inshallah, this coming Wednesday, uh, April the 5th from 6 to 7 in Amin Musallah. Tonight at the Mas at Masjid Umar and Farooq, uh, very own Sheikh Mustafa Umar will inshallah talk about his personal journey from atheism to Islam. 
This event, inshallah, will begin at 8 o'clock. Everyone is invited to attend. Friends of Indos, Indos Hospital will host a, fundra a fundraising dinner on Saturday, April the 8th, 6 o'clock, inshallah, at Knott's Berry Farm Hotel. Inshallah, the Muslim Single Network of Mission of Yehul Masjid is hosting their next event on April the 15th. Anyone interested in attending must register before the day of the event. That's the longest announcement I've ever seen. All right, let us just include, we're making dua for our brothers and sisters who are ill and those who passed away. Uh, Brother Harun Hussein, Fartoum Ahmed, Fatima Abu Bakr, Hanad Musa, college students for recovery from a, tragedy, a, tr a tragic accident. Abdul Qadir, Shafiq Ahmed, and Yasha Yaqub. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove their illness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, grant him speedy recovery and remove their distress. Allahumma ameen. And remove the stress of every Muslim in this community and, and every community. Allahumma ameen. Also, uh, Dr. Anna Munir passed away in Pakistan. Our sister Khadija Azam also passed away. Aziz Umar, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower him with his mercy and resurrect him with the prophets and the messengers, the truthful, and those who follow them on the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ja'al hadha jam'i jam'an marhuma. Allahumma ja'al hadha jam'i jam'an marhuma. Wa tafarruqna ba'dihi tafarruqan ma'asuma. Wa tafarruqna ba'dihi tafarruqan ma'asuma. ولا تجعل فينا ولا حولنا ولا خلفنا شقيا ولا محوما اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم من ولي من أمر المسلمين أمرا فرفق بهم فارفق به اللهم من ولي من أمر المسلمين أمرا فرفق بهم فارفق به ومن اشتد عليهم فاشدد عليه ومن اشتد عليهم فاشدد عليه Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from anxiety and from grief and from laziness and inability. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy in our parents and bless our children and keep them in a straight path, Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring back rahmah in our communities. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to foster this love and compassion and this bond of brotherhood and sisterhood in our masjid and in our community, Allahumma ameen. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واسألوه يعطكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم وأقيموا الصلاة